Hey guys, it's Susie, and in this crash course series, I'm taking Canvas from the beginning, step by step. For those of you who are like, Susie, Canvas is just too hard. I promise you won't think it's too hard if you if you watch all the videos in my series, okay? So we're in video number two, or you might be skipping around, I don't know. And in this video, I'm not only going to revisit how to create a page, because I did show that in my Canvas for Little series, but what I didn't show is how to make that page your homepage in Canvas, so stay tuned for that. If you're just joining me, then you may have missed this information, but typically when I train on Canvas and when I showed when I showed pages in my Canvas for Little series, I talked about the importance of starting in a module, but you may not have to start in a module for your homepage. Let me give you kind of a, a two option thing. If you start in a module, you could call your module uh, important information or something like that. You could call it beginning of the year documents and you could put your homepage there if you want to, or if you just don't want to have this one particular page in a module, I totally understand. And then in that case, you can come over to the Pages button to create it. So when I click Pages, if I have already uh, created one, I'm going to have to always go back to View All Pages to create a new one, okay? So this gives me a list of all the pages I've created in this whole course before, which is why I don't recommend sending kids here. Look at this. <laughs> kids don't know what to look for alphabetically. So remember, if you watch my video on simplifying the sidebar, I usually turn off the pages option for students. But this is nevertheless where you have to go to create your home page, or again, you can create it from a module if you want to watch that video. Um, but I'm going to click plus page. I'm going to call this Mrs. Lolly's class. Just know that whatever you type up here is going to also be uh, repeated in a couple of places. You'll see it. So if you call it Miss Lolly's class, that's going to be at the top of the page. And then if you also make a banner that says Miss Lolly's class, you know, you might have some overlap there. But you do you, boo. <laughs> Um, and so you can decorate and facilitate your page however you want. I usually recommend if it's a home page, you've got something cute at the top. So I'm going to go out and do a little search. My friend, you know, we'll use Bing. And I'm going to search for, there's so much stuff, just ignore everything at the bottom. <laughs> Banner clip art. Do, 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 do. You know? This is the story of the internet right now. I'm going to pause. Nope, there it goes. Okay. And I'm going to click over to images. And I like to focus on ones that are PNG, but I didn't type that. So I could even do like PNG. And that way it has a transparent background if I want to paste it somewhere. So if you want a cutesy little banner, you could put that at the top of your page. Y'all, this will not be a cute page. This is just going to be functional. Okay. <laughs> and you'll want to respect copyright. So in case you didn't know, you can filter down and look for that. I'm not going to go into that on this video, but you can do that. And so this uh, is a fake transparent because you see it has the transparent over top of it so you don't grab it. This one looks to be real, so I can copy that if it were copyright friendly. Again, I'm just pretending right now. I can put that at the top of my page and then I can write something cutesy. Remember, there are no cute fonts in Canvas, but you can upload images with a cute font. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but you get the point. You can make it as cute as you want to make it. And there are plenty of, uh, of other tutorials that will show you cuteness. Um, and so anyway, what I do want to show you is functionality though. So for your home page, you want your buttons, you want your page organized in such a way that even if a parent is viewing it from the car, it looks good. Okay. So I'm going to make mine long and skinny, which on here will look bizarre, but I feel like most parents who are going to go look at this again are on a device. Most high school students are on a device. And so I want you to test it, save it, look at it. The alignment in Canvas is sometimes tricky. So I just always recommend starting with a table and I make my table long and skinny. You can always delete extra tables and you can, or extra cells, and you can also go back and remove the lines. Okay. So I'm going to try to at least make that semi lined up. Okay. And then I just begin to either put text and link it here or buttons and link it here. Just think about things you might need to have. So as an English teacher, I might've wanted to link to my syllabus. Um, as an elementary teacher, I might want to link to my lunch schedule because you know that's what every parent's going to be asking you while we're on elementary specials schedule. And you can put just basic text. Of course, you can center it. You can make it a different size, whatever you want to do. And then you can link that to places. Now, as I mentioned again in that other video, I'm in free Canvas. But if your district has purchased a newer version, upgraded version, links can work differently. So just go with me in theory here. If I highlight over something, typically in Canvas, I would come over to the right to link it to another place in my course. So for example, if my syllabus were on another page, I could link. And y'all, I'm just picking a random page. If you see a blank, you have a link. Just keep that in mind. 
I can also link directly to an assignment, a quiz, an announcement, anything that's already in Canvas, I link from that sidebar. Or if you're using the upgraded version, then there is going to be a link button up here that'll say either course links or um, I think it's like outside links or something. But the course links are exactly what I'm doing over here. So when you click, you would come up here and if you saw like Canvas course links, you would see those same options, link to a page, link to an assignment, blah, 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 blah. So for now, um, I would be linking all those things to something internal. But what if I wanted my kids to do like ABC? -a? And I think I'm spelling that right and punctuating it right. You know, I was not an elementary school teacher. Okay, so it's big ABC and then little ya. <laughs> I can always grab that link. I can come back. And again, I would center this. We're not going over uh, for form, we're going for function, right? So I could center that and I could link to that as an outside link. Again, if you have a newer version, then all your links will be right here, but you can tell the difference. And you saw if I have a blank, I have a link. Let me show you that one more time. So this one, I might be linking to something within Canvas. It could be this time. I don't know if I even have any announcements. Yes, I do. So I can link it to whatever and I'll see it blank. That means I have a link, okay? So these are all linked. That one is not. You would just proceed. Now, something I showed in another video, so I won't um, spend too much time on it now here, but you can go watch it. It's called make, excuse me, it's called creating a button based homepage. I'll try to find that link and put it down there. Um, but I showed how you could also create buttons on this website called the button factory. So again, I'm going to make you go watch the full video to see that, but I could have button, close it. I could have button. I could copy the button. And I could put that on my course as well and make it say whatever I want. So you'd probably have either all words or all buttons. I'm just showing you some options here. And then that can be linked to something outside or something within Canvas, as I talked about earlier, okay? So either way, you're still linking. You still have that same process to get it somewhere. And then you're going to save or save and publish. Now you're going to want to publish it when it's ready for your students to see. So you've created a beautiful homepage. I'm going to go ahead and publish and pretend that it's ready for people to see. I know that looks janky. So you are going to play with it until you get the, um, the alignment right. This is just function again. Okay. So don't judge me here. Um, but once you get the page set, I want to show you in the next clip what you can do with that page to make sure that anyone who opens your course lands on this beautiful page. It is a two-step process now to make this page where it's the first thing that people land on when they come to your course. So the first thing you want to do after you're done designing it, tweaking it, is you're going to click View All Pages. And then you're going to find that page and then over to the right, look for the three dots and click Use This Front Page. You would think that makes it your home page. Alas, it does not. And so once that's the front page of all the pages, now you're going to go Home and your course. And by default, course, courses land on modules. And if you're a teacher of older kids, that might be okay with you. But if you're making this homepage to begin with, you probably want to set it as your homepage. So now over to the right, now that I've set that as the front page, over to the right where it says choose homepage, I'm going to say go to my pages front page. So now voila, anytime somebody joins, not a course, which no one will be joining, then they will land on this page. They'll be able to click links and go where they need to go. So I hope this at least set you on the right track. I would like to see pages that actually look good and are functional. So feel free to tweet me at Susie Lolly and share your screenshots. Let me know if this video has helped you and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that and all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Susie Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.